Hi everyone, welcome to Show It Better. My name is Steven and in today's video, we will see the process behind this exploded cinematic using SketchUp and some animation. So let's start. So this video is sponsored by Skillshare, but we will talk a bit more on this later in the video. So let's define this. What is an exploded cinematic view? According to Wikipedia, an exploded cinematic is a diagram, picture, schematic, or technical drawing of an object that shows the relationship or order of assembly of various parts. It shows the components of an object slightly separated by distance or suspended in surrounding space in the case of a three-dimensional exploded diagram. An object is represented as if there had been a small controlled explosion uh, emanating from the middle of the object causing the object's parts to be separated an equal distance away from their original location. So after that brief background, let's talk more on the technical aspect of creating this etcinometric. You can create an etcinometric with any program or tool. You can use the displacement tool in Revit just like I did in this past video. And you can create a copy of your model and modify it and manually displace it or you can render or export different images and then paste them together in Photoshop or Illustrator, giving the exploded look. Whichever of these options are fine, but in today's video, we will see a bit of the last two techniques. If you have your project in Revit, then I recommend using the displacement tool. If you are using SketchUp or anything else, then follow me in this video. We are going to create two types of images. For the first one is going to be an exploded cinematic image, and the second one is going to be an exploded cinematic video. So for the first one, we are going to open our SketchUp model. Now we have to make sure our entire model is separated into groups by layers and elements. We are going to manually displace each element or part of our building that we want to explode. So it all has to be in closed groups so we don't get any mistakes in our model. Make sure you save the file with a different name so you don't damage your original 3D model. As you can see in my model, everything is placed in groups and in different layers. I have the roof, windows, walls, stairs, etc. All of them are separated. Now, what I'm going to do is separate them from the original model. Let's make sure that this explosion is done in the most interesting way possible according to the design of your building. So if your facade has many elements to it, then I suggest you explode every minimum detail of that facade. We are going to move each element according to the X, Y, or Z axis in the model. So the roof structure and material, you might want to lock it in the Z axis and elevate it from the rest of the model. For this, I suggest you use your arrow keys in your keyboard. So you select one group, hit the up arrow key, and SketchUp will automatically lock it so it is moved only in the Z axis. If you press the left arrow key, it will lock in the green axis and the right arrow in the red axis. I recommend you also do this with your parallel projection option turned on. This way the drawing gets a more technical aspect to it. So this can take a while if your 3D model is not organized, but it will sure have a very interesting results. Now we are going to render this. What we do first is create a plane beneath our whole model. This way when we render, we will have some nice background shadows. Next, we will add a rectangle light on top of our model. For this, we go to the light options in our V-Ray tab and draw a rectangle on top of our model. We have to make sure the arrow is pointing downwards. So if yours is pointing upwards, then you just right click and select flip along groups blue. Now we will open our V-Ray asset editor. Let's click on the light bulb to edit the light settings. What we will do first is lower the importance the, of the sunlight. So in the number tab, you want to type in 0.2 or 0.5 and test to see which one you like best. Now we click on the rectangle light option. We open the side tabs and make sure the invisible option is checked. I like to go with all the other default settings. If you render and see that your light is not intense enough, then you can go back to this menu and increase the value of the intensity. Finally, we will adjust our normal render settings. We will set this to a high resolution and set the frame aspect ratio 
that we want in our image and we render it. This is the final result of my image. So if, if you want, you can add some annotations or just leave it as it is. Now, what if I want to animate my cinematic explosion? Well, let's see how to do it. But first, let's talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video and making all of these videos for you possible every day. It's by spaces like these that show it better can sustain itself and focus on teaching all of you the best of architectural representation. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Skillshare offers creative classes designed for real life and all the circumstances that come with it. These lessons can help you stay inspired, express yourself, and introduce you to a community of millions. If you would like to learn more on more different techniques of illustrating your drawings, I really recommend using Skillshare for different kinds of classes around uh, this subject. The more techniques you know, the better you can express your ideas. Personally, I have lately been interested in learning how to animate my illustrations with After Effects and Photoshop. And if you also want to learn, you can also take this class by Abby Lossing on creating layered GIFs with Photoshop and After Effects. You can learn to animate this exploded to the metric we are doing today with her tips and tricks. So Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads, no advertisements, and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever you, your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 people of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a two month free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. So if you are interested, click the link in the description uh, for uh, one two month free trial and tell me what you think. Now for animating our Atenometric, we are going to use After Effects. I am aware that you could use some plugins inside SketchUp or even animate it in 3D mats or other programs. But in this case, we will be using After Effects. Now, what we will do is render out each element of our cinematic and stitch it together in Photoshop and After Effects. So first, we will use the layers in our SketchUp file to turn all off, to turn off all the layers and just leave the ones that interest us. Next, we will render each one separately. This should be from the same point of view and same lighting. Now, we should import all of our images to a Photoshop file. If we drag them all in, we should they should automatically be placed in the correct place, right? Now, we are going to save this Photoshop file and open After Effects. We are going to create a new composition and import our Photoshop file in. When we do this, it will create a folder inside uh, so we double click to open it and we will see the layers separated. Now we will animate the position of each layer. So we will go first to the roof layer and select the four second mark. Now we will hit P on our keyboard for position and click on the time frame. Next, we will drag our time mark to the zero second mark. And now we will change the position of the roof. Just drag it to another place. We will repeat the same process for each element. One tip I recommend is to select the keyframes of each element, press F9 so the movement has a bit more flow and ease to it. After doing this, you want to render your video and add it to your virtual representations. So that is it. Two styles of exploded cinematics that will make your presentations look much, much, much better. So. Tell me, which one would you use? Comment down below and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.